Everybody up. Everybody. Hey, a couple things, man. All week we said, uh, let's, let's call on Commander Football. All right? You guys are tough, man. We said we'd take all 70 of you and everybody in the building to produce this win. All right? That's for damn sure what happened. So uh, we got stronger this week. All right? We said we had to. We find those edges, all right, to say, can we find the next gear? And you did that tonight, man. So you guys are tough. Ooh. One guy set it off today, Ooh. all right? Pick six. Washington football. Woo. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Burgundy Zone. I am your host, Kyle. I will not be joined by my two co-hosts this evening to be able to recap this absolute slaughter, which goes into the title of this, tonight's episode is The Slaughterhouse, that is no, known as Northwest Field at this point. The Commanders just outright just did dirty to the Carolina Panthers, 40-7. to I'm upset they even got that touchdown. Uh, but that being said, the Burgundy Zone is a part of the Frederick Podcast Network. You can find out more by going to www.listenfrederick.com. And so we, I thought I'd bring in a good friend of the pod, reached out, wanted to get on here. And I can't think of anyone more perfect for this than being Steve Manila from PFF, the QB Impact himself. How, how are you feeling after this uh, very, very beating of a victory, sir? Yeah, hey, what's going on, man? First of all, I appreciate you having me on. It's been a while. Uh, I, you know, I still follow and, and check you guys out, uh, weekly as much as I can. So, uh, miss, miss being on here with the guys, but, uh, secondly, yeah, man, it was a, a beat down. Like you said, uh, I think all of us thought going into the game, uh, shouldn't be a very close game regardless. Um, but, uh, you know, the, I think I was even still a little bit more surprised, um, just overall at the whole team. And after Jaden goes down, they didn't even, it, nothing, nothing missed a beat. So. Uh, just a beatdown, man. It, it's a testament to the whole staff, coaching staff, uh, top to bottom. So th this is this is a complete team. No, you're you're not kidding. And the funny thing is, like when we did our preview for and our predictions, I said thirty-one to six. You know, and mm -hmm. my thought process was, look, as much as everyone wants to talk about our defense and how they haven't been living up to the hype, because everyone was getting on the defense after the Ravens game, and the mm -hmm. Ravens are absolutely right now one of the best offenses in the NFL. And yeah. so we do have to give them, look, give them a little bit of leeway. Like, obviously, no excuses. But going into this game, I said, like, look, this this team should be good enough to not allow Carolina to even get a touchdown. And that wasn't just me being full of myself. I honestly believe that with what we saw against Cleveland. And I'm not saying that Carolina was essentially a pushover. But we right. have the pieces in place to be able to execute on that and be able to to stop them and so that's why i'm saying that i was kind of upset about the touchdown but look i was a point off not that big of a concern but i will say this you like you talked about with losing Jaden, which we are going to get into but i think i want to get your opinion on first and foremost is the offense without Jaden. i mean yeah carolina you could say a lot about but my goodness the fact that they were still able to put up 40 points i mean obviously one of the touchdowns being from dante fowler but like talk about cliff and that offense yeah, I mean, uh, I think, uh, you know, when, when Cliff was hired on, you know, there was some question marks uh, regarding, you know, his time in Arizona. And uh, if he could if he could make things work in, in Washington calling plays. And, man, it's been a home run hire. Uh, you know, this team is, you know, I, I don't know the last time or even if we can recall, especially for our era, uh, being a fan of this team, having, having an offense scoring 35, 30, 34, 35 points a game. I mean, even with RG3, as fun as that era was that year really was, it wasn't like this, No, you know? So uh, yeah, this team's rolling, man. I mean, um, Marcus Mariota, you know, you know, he come in and, and, and the good thing is he's a veteran. He's played a lot uh, and he's very similar to not, I guess he's not very similar to Jaden, but they kind of have some styles, right? He can run it a little bit. You know, he runs the RPO offense pretty well. Uh, he's a smart guy. So, uh, you know, he's, he's been a pro for a long time, and obviously he was a great college quarterback. So, uh, you know, the similarities are there. Um, but, uh, yeah, Cliff Kingsbury's done a heck of a job. This team's running the football as good as anybody. They're scoring at a crazy rate. 
Uh, red zone efficiency is awesome. It, it's it's honestly sometimes it's hard to believe being a fan of this team uh, because we have really never saw it. So I, you know what I mean. It's funny you say that because I said to my kids today because like today was the first time my kids actually got to sit down and watch the like they they weren't sitting obviously my my son is yeah. three my daughter's almost right. two they weren't really sitting but I had to tell them like you don't know how blessed you are to be able to right. witness this kind of football. Cause I have not experienced this right. in my lifetime, but like yeah. that, that being said, dude, because Marcus Mariota, 18 of 23, 205 yards and two touchdowns. I think he mm-hmm. carried the ball 11 times. I think he had like 40 yards rushing, but Brian Robinson, 12 carries 71 yards in the touchdown and 5.9 on the ground. I think mm-hmm. you hit the nail on the head. It's that rushing attack. And like, it, it's crazy because as much as you want to put, like, obviously, Baltimore came into that game and had a very good plan against yeah. our running game. But the the fact is, when that running game is going, everything really does stem from that. And it says a lot about, essentially, what we came out with on the first play of the game on offense with Jaden Daniels keeping that read option that Jay Gruden actually highlighted last week, saying, "There, this yeah. guy crashing, you're going to have a possible touchdown on this run. And that's essentially what basically happened. So yeah. let's get into that run that inevitably ended up wounding Jaden Daniels. And it, I, as soon as I saw it, I was like, that's his ribs. That's his ribs, yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously, as a fan uh, of Jaden, all, all of us are. Uh, you know, we worry about him getting down and when he runs. Um, it was a talk when he was drafted. Uh, so I'm not surprised of him being banged up. Um, you know, you don't want to take unnecessary hits, uh, yeah. especially him, right? Yeah. So I think it's going to be a learning experiment for him, I hope. Uh, I mean, he's electric, and you don't want to take that away from the, the game uh, and his game. But, um, you know, he's got to be a little bit smarter. Uh, but I think, obviously, football injuries happen to anybody, right? So yeah. not just quarterbacks. So um, I, I, the good news is he's fine. Uh, they said everything was good, negative on the x-rays, so he's good. Uh, and he should be ready for the Bears next week, which will be a heck of a game with Caleb Williams and, and Jaden Dance. It's going to be fun to watch. So, um, But, yeah, long term, though, I, I hope that uh, we'll see him get down a little bit more quicker than – because he's not built like Josh Allen, you know, no. so that's that's going to be a thing. Uh, a similar build to Lamar, but I think Lamar is still a little bit – has a little bit more to him, I think. Um, I understand what but, you uh, mean by that. Yeah, yeah, but uh, I, I, overall, though, man, he's – Luckily, they didn't need him to come back in a game, and he was smiling on the sidelines. He's good. Well, and that's my whole thing with Jaden is, like, obviously you don't want to take that competitor out of him. But yeah. if you, when you're ru- rushing, and that as soon as that first guy is on your back and you're trying to stiff arm him off, go down. Just yeah. get down. I don't care yeah. if you slide or not. Just get down. That yeah, way, nothing sure. is coming about from it. You don't want to run into that issue. And I think uh, Lamar doesn't get enough credit for that because yes. Lamar really does avoid those sort of situations at a gr- at exponential rate. Like when he gets injured, it's in the pocket. And so with, with Jaden on this one, that was where my thought process was with Jaden on this one. We've seen Jaden slide. We've mm-hmm. seen him have those kind of goofy roll out roll downs or, you know, just getting onto the ground. Just do that. I don't care what you have to do. Just get yeah. down as soon as because as soon as you go down to the ground and if somebody hits you and injures you, at least we'll get a flag out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so like sure. that way you get an excuse attributed to it where look, he got down but somebody still wanted to land on him. But like that's the one thing with Jaden, as much as he has come in and just light the league and this team, this area, the DMV on fire. That's mm-hmm. the one. Like it, it sucks that he's such a competitor to the point where you're saying, "Give yourself up." <laughs> like, yeah, it's crazy to say. No that. doubt. Yeah, no doubt. I, you know, he's been he's been as advertised though. Um, even last week they took away the run game and he was able to throw for what 250 yards, two touchdowns. So Dude, and he was throwing dimes. Steve. Yes. I mean, dimes. Talk, talk about those throw as somebody who prides himself yeah, in being man. the quarterback mechanic, being able to get these guys up and running for the next level. Yeah. Talk about those kind of throws, the pinpoint accuracy with the Ravens guys on his back. That was incredible. Yeah, it is. I mean, you know, we talked about it during the pre-draft. And, you know, when we watched film on him yeah. at LSU, and he was so accurate, mid middle and then downfield. 
And he's just showing that now. He just throws with anticipation. He's on time. He gets his guys open. He'll throw in those tight windows. Uh, it's his touch, man. He's got great accuracy. He's got a good enough arm, obviously, to spread the field. Uh, it's great to see him and McLaurin's connection. Um, so Terry finally has a true, legit QB1, and he's showing why he's been so good. Um, so, But, yeah, Jaden's just – I mean, it, again, it's, it's more so of just, man, he's just accurate. And, and a lot of guys – they don't have that right it's very rare to find that it factor and he has that it factor he can make any throw in any tight space and he proved it against a, a really good ravens team last week so uh, that was one of those where you you kind of watch and you're like okay yeah this this kid really is for real like they're they're all right they're gonna be all right you one know? thing so, that i personally believe in steve is that to be able to judge if a quarterback is going to be good at the next level in the nfl is their accuracy yeah if you're able to put that ball in a spot where only your guy can go get it sort of thing but which brings me into my next point with marcus mariota today as much as like the first couple throws it definitely seemed like he was a train in the sense that mm -hmm. it took a little bit for him to get going to get back into the rhythm of things he sure. seemed sloppy at first he threw that one diami um i think it was an in route threw it inside to him allowed the db to come back and swat that thing down but yeah. then after that, you see him completing the ball in third down and Noah Brown deep down the field, being able to distribute the football, move the chains down the field, allow the running game to really progress them for their short yardage situations. I mean, I don't really have anything negative to say about Marcus Mariota. Um, he proved a lot to me when he changed his number. And so at, yeah. when, he, when he did that, I was like, okay, you're the best backup in the league now. But really, right. like <laughs> him coming out and performing yeah. this way, it really shows you from a – general manager perspective and obviously from a head coach perspective why it's so necessary to have your backup quarterback be very similar to your starting quarterback so like you don't change your playbook at all yeah no that's 100 percent the truth and they nailed it they nailed it signing Mariota. i mean they, they had a plan and they executed it cliff kingsbury and dan quinn have done a great job peters of course you know being the gm did a great job you know everyone was worried about the old line they've been amazing man who would have thought that that old line was going to play like they have uh receiver wise they thought well they only have terry well noah brown stepped up you know yeah. i mean zacchaeus has stepped up man i mean the, the whole team zach Ertz, old self is balling he like, had a crazy. bad game last week i will say yeah. that steve but he came back yeah. in this game obviously four receptions 40 yards and a touchdown i think his first yeah. touchdown of the year yeah, it's good to see that. It's good to see Sanut get a touchdown. Uh, I think he's got a lot of promise at tight end. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this team, man, they're they're set up because it's a younger group, especially on O, and they're set up for a good uh, a, a while, obviously, with Daniels. Uh, it's it's going to be fun to be a fan of this team and crazy for all of us to kind of say that finally, but it, it, is, it is the truth. I mean, if this wasn't a commander's, we'd be saying it about another team. We'd be like, man, they're so lucky they have this guy. Well, right. we have them. So it's awesome now. Just enjoy the ride, I guess, because we I think all of us we deserve it as fans of this team. So, <laughs> dude, with how many, with how long we've been waiting just for good, sustainable offensive production, and yeah. to be able to get that, like this wasn't a quarterback controversy where they drafted Kirk Cousins in the same draft that they got RG three, and now we're right. now the quarterback question is coming up. No, this is just the backup coming in, injured at first, brought in, and you're seeing the sluggishness. But the offense is continuing to be able to be self-sustainable to the point. And then the defense stepping up. So this yeah. is the out of two of the past three weeks, this is them absolutely taking out an, an axe and just going to town on the other team. It was beautiful to witness. So best play of the day, I would have to personally say, I'm not sure what you would say, but it's that Dante Fowler pick six. I mean, yeah. for t three reasons. First being that Dante Fowler is able to catch that football when it's a dart. The running back doesn't have a chance to catch it. It goes right by his face. Dante right. catches that ball. And then the ability for him to jump and do that Duke move away from Dalton, continue running downfield. And then the third reason is Deron Payne's big ass is down yeah. there <laughs> blocking for him and just getting yeah. in the way of the uh, wide receiver, the running back. I mean, I, that was like a, that's a team play right there, you know, and I absolutely love it, dude. What was the best play of the day for you personally? Yeah, man. I mean, I, I would say that I, I could agree. I think that that really set the tone for the defense and, and you could see the effort. Uh, Mariota spoke afterward a game and said that they're having as much fun as they ever have had playing football. Like that's awesome for, 
to hear that because that tells you that Dan Quinn's culture really has changed in that organization, not just Dan Quinn, but you know, you get what I'm saying. The, the organization's mm-hmm. culture has changed and uh, they love that. You can tell they're having fun. They're having fun out there playing football. They're winning. I mean, they're five and two and uh, you know, they got a good bears team coming in next week. So that'd be fun. But uh, this, I mean, you know, you look at the NFC right now and the NFC North stacked, no doubt. Uh, the Eagles are four and two now, four and two. So the yeah. NFC East is kind of Washington, and Philly. Uh, Dallas is is I don't even know what the heck's going on in Dallas, and the Giants are awful. So you know, you look around the NFC. I mean, the, the Washington's gonna have a shot. I mean, this team's gonna have a shot. Who would have thought? But they're gonna have a shot. I think in the playoffs. Obviously, if guys stay healthy, right? That's the big key. So long season still ahead. Got to win games, but. Uh, Looking at them right now, man, they're they're the good thing is they're blowing out the teams they should. Yeah. We've never seen that. We've never seen that. No, it, it, it's to your you point, know? like from years past, Steve, sorry to cut you off, but it's like you're good. You like those games were the Steelers when they're undefeated coming in, or the Eagles coming in, and everyone's considering it's gonna be a blowout. We're able to pull those out in some yeah. sort of uh, rhyme or fashion. But then like this is different where those teams would have lost against these other teams, right? Where this Agreed. team is actually going in. And yes, they lost against the Ravens, but they're doing what they need to do in order to be competitive in every game. And it almost yeah. seems like like these less, I'm not going to say lesser teams, just I think that today Washington was obviously the better football team. But it's like the defense was like a tidal wave against yeah. them. And I, that brings into my next question I wanted to talk to you about was, You know, I had Ryan Fowler on here on Wednesday, and I specifically brought up Emmanuel Forbes. um, Mm -hmm. Because me personally, I don't think that Emmanuel Forbes is done in D.C. I think he was just waiting for his time. And my goodness, did he come out. That that interception, it's going to get chalked up as like maybe lucky, whatever. He ran that route better than Deontay Johnson. Deontay Johnson didn't even want to go to that spot. Emmanuel Forbes is already there. Yeah, yeah, that was huge for Forbes and uh, for him to show that he can still play, right? And that was huge for his confidence. Uh, yeah, I don't know what – I know Dalton was pretty frustrated. I don't know if the route – you know, if, if Deontay Johnson didn't break the route right or what happened. But it, regardless, Forbes picks it and takes it, you know, a good 20 yards or whatnot. Uh, so, no, that's a, that's a big play for him, and I'm sure his confidence – uh, and, and, again, the defense is, is just flying around, man. They're flying around. Sucks losing Jonathan Allen. But, uh, but I mean, they, they have guys that will step up, right? I mean, you know, and, and, and they have. So the veterans on the D-line have played well. Fowler is one, you know. Um, so these guys, these guys are playing, man. They're flying around. What about, uh, you know, Bobby Wagner? I mean, you know, coming in and being a leader like he has. Louvu's awesome to watch. So, man, they're, 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 they're doing a great job. And Dan Quinn, we knew with him coming in, the defense would be better. So it's it, it's good to see that they're actually scoring now, making plays. That's the Dan Quinn defense we all wanted that he had in Dallas for the last few years. You know what I mean? So yeah, it's fun, man. That this this team's rolling right now. Yeah, that was the one thing. Like I was asked by A Wad on nine ten the fan. Uh, he asked me. He said, you know, what what win record is going to make it a good season for you? Your expectations for this football team. Well, my expectations were, I said, I don't, it's not a, about wins or losses. It's about developing a team. It's yeah. not, it's not more, it, it, I don't want to see a collection of individuals. I want to mm-hmm. actually see a team being developed. And a win like today is what really puts the stamp on that for me, Steve. It's just showing you, yeah. it, it's not just a collection of individuals. It is the team coming together when they absolutely need to. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. what I really take away from this. And that Emmanuel Forbes interception, what that tells me really is that Emmanuel Forbes isn't just reading the wide receiver. He's actually playing corner to the point where he sees Andy Dalton cocking that thing back. And oh, he, yeah. That instinct takes over and he runs to that spot and he's he's the only one there to catch it. And it, it yeah. seemed like that his college self, that made sense. And so yeah. hopefully Emmanuel Forbes could continue this going forward because, uh, man, Sky's the limit for that young man. But, Steve, no doubt. I'm going to let you get out of here because I know you got to yeah. – I'm sure you got a lot to do. But before you get out of here, just like to plug your social media handle and your ha- – and your uh, not your show, but your your handle and your, uh, and your company before you get out of here. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate that, man. Always uh, enjoy, sh- you know, getting on here. I definitely will again at least a couple more times, hopefully, this season. But uh, just hit me up on uh, Twitter and Instagram at uh, QBI Coach Manella. And, uh, yeah, you, hit, you can find us at QBImpact.com. 
you know, we do, we do a lot of training out this way in Oklahoma and, and other states as well. So just check us out. But I appreciate that plug, brother. My man, of course, man. You always take time out for me. You reached out, say you want to come on. Of course oh, you yeah. can, Steve. I know you're Had a busy to. man, but anytime you want, brother, come on. All right, buddy. You All be right, good, man. man. Enjoy the dub. It's a big week, brother. Yes, Enjoy sir. your work week. All right, you too. We'll see you. All right, man. Ah. All right, everybody. We just spoke with the man, Mr. Steve Manila. Always appreciate Steve's time uh, being able to come on here and talk with us. This was a slaughter, in all honesty, to be honest. And, like, it was cr- amazing to see. I mean, the, out of the floodgate, Dante Fowler in this defense. I mean, one of the first plays on defense you could see is Deron Payne getting into the face of Andy Dalton, and Andy Dalton had to get rid of that ball so freaking fast. Like, that pressure, if you're able to apply that pressure – is what really creates those opportunities for the DBs, and we certainly saw that in this game. Now we are joined by our next guest, Mr. Commando G. What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. How you doing, Goody? How we doing, man? Happy to be back. Thank you for having me. It's a great day, isn't it? Fantastic day. Oh, sure is. Washington is on top of the NFC East. They absolutely came out and whooped tail on the Carolina Panthers, 40-7. to they destroyed them in time of possession and yards and first downs, which I'll get into real quick, Goody. Passing first downs, they had 26 while Carolina had 10. They had 12 rushing first downs while Carolina had 5. On third downs, they were 5 of 10 while Carolina was 3 of 10. So but before we go any further, Goody, I just want to ask you, if you were to say somebody, an unsung hero in this game, someone that deserves credit, that probably won't get all the spotlight and the limelight, who would you say that'd be? Um, So right off the top, I would have to just kind of go with Mariota. You know, um, you know, everybody thinks he's, uh, you know, he is what he is. He's a, he's a veteran. He's there for, you know, moral support, you know, helping, you know, guide the young guy along, which you can't really give Jaden all his success to, just him you know it's easy to do that but obviously he had somebody there from the time he walked into that building so you know the little things that he has done already just to help Jaden be where he is you know that's things that are unspoken about Mariota um but even when he first came out you know you felt immediately the fall off right and you're automatically thinking like man you know this isn't gonna this is nothing like that but he ended up sticking in getting adjusted and you know Cliff Kingsbury everybody kind of put their Thing together knowing like hey this is what we're doing so we're going to still keep our foot on the gas so it was really just um you know a team really open eyes to the, just what kind of team we have to have you know drop in this guy that was never expected to play and for us to still continue or keep our foot on the gas um i give it to mariota because he could have after the first few plays you know just really just fell and just said hey you know we're just going to ride this thing out but he showed up yeah. and he got it done you know Dude, you're not you're not kidding. You're not wrong because when you look at the stats of just yardage in this game by each unit, you would think looking at it, if you didn't have the the teams listed and you were you were told that Jaden Daniels left in the in after the first drive, you would think that the 85 passing yards and the 95 rushing yards was by Washington. But no, they Washington kept Carolina to less passing yards than they did rushing yards. And then with Washington, they had 207 passing yards with 214 rushing yards. Three of six in the red zone. And when they didn't capitalize in the red zone, they still got field goals out of it. So the fact of the matter is, this like it was a slaughter. And it was amazing to see that, like you had talked about Mariota, I think that's a great one by you, by saying Mariota and what he was able to do in this football game because it was obviously monumental. I think Frankie Lubu is somebody that's going to get all the flowers typically. Uh, but that's somebody I would bring up four tackles, one sack, and two tackles for loss. But another guy I'll bring up, and I'll say deserves his flowers for this game, is Mikey Samard still. Seven tackles on the day, one tackle for loss, actually led the team in tackles. He was flying up behind in front of the line of scrimmage, being able to make some plays on some crucial downs, and continuing to be a force on the outside there. And so I think that he is somebody that really does deserve a lot more credit for what he's doing because he showed up today wearing his Daryl Green jersey, uh, which the ceremony retiring his jersey was at halftime, of course, which salute to Daryl Green. He obviously deserves it. But, dude, S- S- Mikey came out almost playing like him uh, to an extent. So I think Mikey definitely deserves that head nod because, dude, my goodness, does he deserve the credit because this team, yeah, this defense, I- flying around, my friend. I agree. I agree. 
I right. said um, early, uh, early two early interceptions was only fitting for a Daryl Green uh, jersey retirement day. So I know uh, that was just kind of like something from above that happened, but I like it. Uh, what did I see? I saw something that Washington, somebody, what was it? There was a stat that said like the pick six that happened. Like there was a first, last time it happened, it was 2001 and it was against Carolina. I forget what it was, but it was some stat that was supplied by. And I was like, my goodness, of course. It just, you know, time is a flat circle, it's, so to speak. It's, that's the trend right now. That's the trend. We're going in the history books for Washington this year. So that's a great point by you, sir. Uh, but let's answer some fan questions, brother, uh, to wrap up this kind of recap here. This one from Deluxe Rank the performances of offense, defense, and special teams. Yeah. So um, in terms of rating, are we giving a number grade, a letter grade? Letter grade. Letter grade. Okay, so I'll start with the offense. Obviously, they um, they they did their job. You know, with Jaden there, you know, Jaden leaving in the first quarter at that, uh, the offense handled their job. They put up the numbers that you know even exceeded what we would expect after losing you know our star quarterback. Um, so I'm giving the offense an A flat out. Um, the defense, I mean, come on, it was a shutout you know, the whole game until that last little, um, you know, little drive that they had. So I'm giving the defense an A as well. Um, special teams, I don't really – well, so I'll say this. There's two things that I can kind of recall. And one thing is the kickoff team with Austin Eckler is just phenomenal, right? I feel like every time he actually gets the ball and he's driving, you know, running out of the, the uh, end zone, he's getting to at least the 40. And it looks smooth and effortless. So that's one point. And then – I'll give it an A in total, so three A's across the board because Cybert, you know, Cybert shows up and shows out. He shuts everybody down, everybody that's still wondering about our kicking situation. It's solved. Move it on, you know, triple A. <laughs> Dude, you're, you're so right because, like, that's the one area where Carolina could have really done some damage and kind of taken the momentum back. But our special teams on kickoff, they are very good at nullifying things and stopping anything that gets upfield. You brought up Seibert, who obviously has been, I think he's like 15 of 16, to probably more now, 17 of 18. Um, at this point, hit a 49-yarder. Really, early on in the season, it was a catastrophe. But ever since we brought that young man in, he has done a fantastic job being able to knock down the points when we truly need it. And there was one play in particular I remember where Xavier Leggett took out the, uh, I think it was kickoff, and we were able to stifle him at the 15 or 10-yard line or it might have been the 20, and just it shows you the kind of tackling aspect of it all, and I thought you you bring up Austin Eckler was perfect because I love that view, that, that cam that they have on the wires that comes down right above the players' helmets, and like that one, like you see Austin Eckler make two or three steps, that vision to get upfield, all of a sudden he's up at the kicker. You know what I mean? It's like, it's almost, yeah. it's almost it's going to the zooming. house. <laughs> and so to your point, I would say yes. I would say everyone deserves an a the time of possession washington won 35 minutes and five seconds the carolinas 24 minutes and 55 seconds the defense getting home onto andy dalton forcing those throws being able to capitalize on the interceptions and then being and then the offense being able to actually execute on those uh, turnovers and get points on them i think everyone deserves an a in his breath i think dan quinn said it best that this was a team victory it took everybody in the building to get this victory because it's not just like Jaden coming out and ever blowing the doors off him. This was the backup coming in. This was losing Jonathan Allen, having the rookie uh, Johnny Newton, Deron Payne having more on his plate, Fedarian Mathis getting into the mix, losing Dorrance Armstrong, Dante Fowler coming out with that pick six, being able to get us like coming in and just being a, a absolute animal. He's been on fire the last two games. He's been playing like a man possessed at this point. And so I, I, Dan Quinn is absolutely right when he says this was a total team victory. And there's A's across the board. Um, I feel bad for Carolina fans. I feel bad for some of those Carolina players like J.C. Horn and others. But my goodness, what they witnessed today, that was, uh, that was taking the sheep to slaughter, so to speak, if uh, we're being blunt about the situation. Now, the, the next question that we have in the Discord, this one from Arch as well, if I can pull it up. Were you rooting for Washington to go for two at the end of the first half to make it 28-0 to zero right before the 28 was retired at halftime? Um, no, personally not. 
you know, I was just more concerned at that point about Jaden's health. I think he was already kind of banged up and out of that game. So at that point, I was kind of just taking it as it is. But um, I got my uh, sense of the honoring uh, D Green when we got, you know, those two early interceptions, those two early right. turnovers. I was like, man, the DBs are have been touched by the, by the man himself today. So I was happy with that. But I didn't even really take note of uh, the two-point conversion, you know, equaling 28 at that point. The one reason this being is that Arch, when he did a score prediction earlier in the week, he predicted it would be a 28 uh, margin victory in, uh-huh. in honor of him. So that's why it's on his head. But I'll tell you right now, dude, I did not even think of that at all whatsoever. I mean, we are retiring D Green's jersey at halftime. And then we, we de- I think we've done enough for D Green. We all need to be doing the two-point conversion at that point. Get, get the points that you can. Just get it on the board. Let's not get... S- get cute with this let's yeah. just go get the points that we need but just like you i was worried about Jaden daniels and just obviously history history speaking and the the path that he's on you don't want him to miss time you don't know the severity of the situation but i i will be i have to be honest that i do feel guilt for being a little bit selfish in the sense that i did start him in fantasy in two different leagues and so, yeah, so I was like, I was like, please get out there, dude. I, I need more than five. I need more than five <laughs> at a quarterback position. But you know I what? Hear you. I'll take I the, hear you. I'll take the 40 to seven victory any day of the week with a fantasy loss. I do not care about that. But that's just what my mind was thinking at that time. I want him back in there. But look, long term speaking, this was the right decision by them. They kind of knew it. It was in the bag at that point. But no, Arch. Uh, getting the two-point conversion to make it 28-0 to for D. Green was not on my mind whatsoever. The next question we have, I'm going to ask this one from Yam Sensei, which goes up to the guy you gave flowers to. Does Mariota deserve his flowers now, and can haters move on at least a tiny bit? Um, yeah, so I wouldn't be too, you know, all in on that, right? We saw what we saw. It was it was good to, you know, get it, you know, carry us along through how confident I feel about it moving forward is still up in the air. Uh, Most of my confidence would come from just the way that the team has been built and coached and more or less the offense has been built and coached, whereas they can seem to put up numbers any which way they choose. Um, But yeah, he does deserve his flowers. At least he got to kind of get his little spotlight, his little burn, his sweat, and uh, show up that, you know, he's not just a uh, guy that's just there with gray hair, you know, helping him get through the playbook and stuff. So <laughs> he got his little, he got his little fun for coming to Washington at a home game at that. Um, so he got to kind of quiet some people with his stats and, and uh, what he put on for the team. But um, I'm not too confident in in that being the, uh, you know, situation moving forward. Um, but at the end of the day, there's nothing to really be upset about besides um, just the unfortunate injury. But we had a great victory at home, alumni game. Uh, shout out to Mario to give him his flowers. Yes, he definitely deserves it. I will consider myself one of those haters because of him rocking the zero. I was very harsh on Mariota. And the way that he started out when he came into this game was not very good, if we're being honest. And that that's the fact of the matter. And you have to be better. But like I said this to Steve earlier, it, it's almost like he was a train. Uh, it took him a little bit to get going, but then he got back into the rhythm. You definitely felt like he was back to his normal self. Being there with the accuracy, obviously being 18 of 23 really speaks to that. Being able to get outside the pocket when he was feeling the rushers, being able to dump the ball off when he needed to, just being a good safety valve in that sense of knowing where to go with the football. Um, Obviously using his legs to pick up first downs as well. So obviously that hasn't completely lost on him. But we have to be honest in the sense that it was not the same as it was if Jaden were in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, Yeah, there there definitely is. But what you're looking for is that you can't, you're not going to change the playbook for Mariota. You're going to keep it the same. Obviously, the output might, might not be the exact same, but at least you're able to execute on those runs. Like, I think you bring up a really good point in the sense that the offense was still able to have the power running game. They were still able to get those touchdowns of Brian Robinson in the red zone. They were still able to use play action, hit Ben Sinnott for that touchdown over to the sideline. And then Marcus Mariota with the play-action rollout, hitting Zach Ertz in the end zone with a a defender draped on his back. I think Mariota deserves credit in that uh, as well. So I'm not sure how many haters of Mariota are out there. I don't consider myself a hater anymore because he changed his number. I currently think he's the best backup in the league, and I think today was a great, you know, staple and a stamp on that, saying that 
he he actually might be at this point. Now, the next question we have, this one is from Yam as well. On a more serious note, with injuries piling up, both serious and not so serious, do you think having the late bye is again hurting us? Or could it help us making a real playoff push with this good head head start to the season? Um, so I don't really know too much about how a buy is, you know, it could be it's all about how you look at it, I would assume, you know, but as a team coming into the season, you know when your bye week is. You know, so it's more or less mentally preparing for that and you know, that battle, you know, that endurance that you have to have before you get there. And then, you know, what it means at that point versus where you have to go afterwards. So I wouldn't really consider having an early buy, a late buy, be an advantage or disadvantage. Um, at this point, you know, everybody, every team has one. They have to face it and they come out of it. You know, they have to play another game. So I was never big on early buys, late buys and stuff like that. So I'm not going to really use that. Um, you know, when that week does come, our team is going to get right, you know, mentally, you know, physically, whatever they need to, because, you know, they are humans. We are, we're, you know, they need a week off and everybody gets one. Um, they know when their bye week is. And by then, who knows what our record is, but they're going to take it just like every other team and, and, and get right when they come back. So I'm with you on that. I, it, it's hard to say, like, obviously this would be a great time to have a bye for Jaden Daniels and Brandon Coleman, who obviously left this game with a concussion. And you're looking at next week saying most likely he won't be able to come back for that, just being safe with the whole thing. But, like, I think it benefits Chicago um, having a bye week ahead of us just to be able to game plan a little bit more on our offense and what we like to do and and I, and I all that jazz. But at the, end of the, at the end of the day, the week 14 bye doesn't – it it's not really that much of a help because by that point you already know a lot of these teams and you already know what they like to do. And so typically teams will use a bye week just to get another week of prep on the opponent they're about to face. Cause normally you'd only have five to six days to be able to really look at your opposing, uh, the opposing team. And so then you can actually use it. So having an early buy actually helps in prep for one of the game following but then you're back to the standard regular procedure after that. By week 14, it, it you would say the only benefit truly really is is just be able to get your guys some rest. But we don't know where you're going to be at in week 14. You could be out of the playoff picture at that point with injuries. So does it truly even help you in that sense? So just the gla- glass looking half full, I will say it it's just going to help you be able to prep for playoff teams and you're in a good, good enough position to do so. But am I going to cry about it? No. I mean, it would be nice to have at this point, but you had no, you, we would have no idea what it was when you yeah. really needed it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. more of a luck a- aspect of this. But look, we're in the driving seat in the NFC East. We are 5-2 and two at this point. We have a team actually here, and we have a damn good opponent next week in Chicago, and I hope that Jaden Daniels is back for it. Are you any are you concerned at all, Goody, about Jaden being able to start in this game? Yeah, um I, I am. Um I don't know how severe the injury was. Obviously, none of us know yet, but um, you know, for a competitor like that, for him to actually have to leave the game, you know, he went to the blue tent, you know, tried to warm up, couldn't make it happen. So they called it, you know, brought him inside, and then afterwards he came out without the pads and uh he had a little bit of encouragement on his face, but I wasn't sure if I'm buying that entirely. You know, he may have just been trying to be a good teammate and not really uh, sulk in what he's dealing with. Um, but at the end of the day, um, it's really coming down to seeing what the results are. You know, if it's uh, severe, if it's, you know, not too, um, you know, not too, not too painful to deal with. Uh, rushing him back, I'm not a big fan of at all. I feel kind of the same way like uh, Brian Robinson against the Ravens, whereas, okay. you know, he probably could have gone if 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 the coaches let him. He would have probably gone and probably would have scored two touchdowns, you know. But um, the way that they approached it, the way they took care of him, said, hey, you know, it's a long season. Let's just get through this, win or lose. But we need you for the, the bigger picture, obviously. So um, it's unfortunate that CBS already flexed the game to, you know, 4 o'clock and they were looking for the hype. But. You know, this Washington team could come out and still smack the Bears without Jaden Daniels. That's how confident I am in what's going on, what's been building. 
Um, the quarterback position obviously is still going to be, you know, interesting. It's going to make you want to turn on that TV next next uh, Sunday at four o'clock to see what we have. But I still feel confident that we could win for a little bit without him being back and, and totally healthy and just waiting for that time. I'm with you. I am not overly concerned about it. I remember not too it probably was long ago when Tony Romo had a really bad rib injury. And what they did is they just ended, uh, gave him more pads for the interior inside of his pads in order to help with that rib injury. Obviously, it could be different than what Tony Romo has. I think the big takeaway from it was when he was throwing on the sideline and he immediately started wincing and going over. Uh, you knew something was up in his mannerisms and how he went down to the ground after those runs when facing another defender. He didn't want to take that contact. And that's where like you're kind of looking at Jaden saying, well, we want that to be done ahead of time so you're not put in that position after something like that happens to you. And I'm sure that's why he threw his helmet down. Like just being like, yeah, I should have gotten down before that, yeah. you know. Yeah. And yeah. I, I know that's the type of competitor he is. Like the, he just, he when he sees blood, he wants to go get it. And I, I wholeheartedly understand that. But there is a safety aspect to this. We don't want you to miss any time. The more time you miss, the less time you're able to actually get it there with your teammates, blood, sweat, and tears. Be able to fight through them with this kind of stuff. But obviously, this team has his back, along with his backup quarterback. Uh, no pun intended. But I am, I'm not that much concerned about next week and looking forward because there are ways to be able to mask it. There are ways to be able to help him out a little bit in that breath. But you would have to imagine that running the ball with him is not going to be as prevalent as it was before. So it kind of does restrict you in the play calling and game planning um, aspect. So I think the weight is much more so going to be on Cliff and how they kind of orchestrate this thing because that does put you in a corner, so to speak, of what you're able to do. So the offensive line is going to have to come out and be able to push dudes around, be able to push Montez Sweat into the earth, and hopefully Andre, um, Andrew Wiley can be able to come through in that breath. But I think that's my more so concern about it all, is even if Jaden is out there, you're going to have to be changed a little bit. And that, that's all right. I have full confidence in them. And Obviously, I have confidence in Terry McLaurin, who had six receptions for 98 yards. And for those wide receivers, because they're catching a lot, they had a little bit of difficulty early on, but Mariota going 18 of 23, you can't really put all that much bad stuff on them, so to speak. But I'm not overly concerned. I think that they'll be able to come out next week and be able to orchestrate this offense. I just hope that the defense can continue this intensity that they do bring against these other teams like Cleveland like the the Panthers. If you're able to bring that energy, that attitude, that pressure, good things will happen. And we know with the quarterback at Chicago, when he is pressured, he puts the ball on the ground. And that's exactly what you're looking for, man. Yep. Before we get out of here, G, last question I have for you. What is the biggest surprise of the season so far? <clears throat> All right. That's a good one. Um, biggest surprise of the season so far. Man, that's hard to pinpoint. If anything, and this may be like a weird, weird answer or just not a normal answer, but the the biggest surprise is how many people I still see that are not satisfied or excited about this future that we have. You know, the people that are still nitpicking at the smallest little details and things. Um, it's like, dude, move it along. Like, do you see what's in front of us? Like, are you feeling how the, do you breathe this air right now? You know, please tell so me you're referencing of... the Redskins logo, not being on the helmet on the Dale Green merch. Is that what you're talking about? No, you know, I didn't even, I didn't even realize <laughs> that, you know, honestly, I'm not referencing that. I'm just speaking about some people that are still just not like seeing what good we have after all these years of not having anything really to, um, you know, be really proud of besides the burgundy and gold itself. But uh, the biggest surprise is that not everybody's on board and they're still trying to uh, nitpick and stuff like that. But um, besides that for myself, I'm a very optimistic person. So I go into every season uh, knowing we may not be the best, but I still know that my, my team is my team. So I, I give it, I play, I, I play it as if I'm playing for that team and there's no way that I'm not going to take any field and not give it my all. Uh, but this is like a different time because we're actually really doing it. And obviously the, you know, the nation is on notice about it, but 
um, that would be my biggest surprise that not everybody's bought in yet. I think my biggest surprise thus far, I'll say, Goody, is how quickly the team was built. You know, and that was my biggest expectation, which is being able to build a team looking forward. And I'll be honest in the sense that, like, seeing that in week two, week three, going against the Bengals, like, really just seeing that team develop, it was it was amazing to witness because it's something you would think to be able to see in week nine or ten. But that early on, you're like, okay, well, is this fluff? Is this just media speak, just being able to try to help build that um, or just put the facade out there that the team is actually one? But currently at this point, I mean, obviously it's well noted. It, like that is a football team that we have developing here. And there's people that want to be here. Like in Mariota speaking, saying that this is the most fun he's had in his career. And just lo- the people in the building make it a really unique atmosphere and wanting to come to work every day. And it, it's a fresh breath of air. But I think that's the most surprising aspect for me is just how quickly that team was one and how they did come together because with the 60% turnover rate that they did have with the guys that were currently here, not knowing how this front office was going to actually view them and still buying in being with the team, just the team aspect overall, instead of just being an individual trying to secure themselves in their future, just buying into that program. I think it speaks a lot to what they are building and to your credit, like that's what the future is that people want to be here. It is the atmosphere. It is the team that they want to be a part of and to be able to enjoy going to work every day and whooping people's asses. And this is what we're seeing. And I honestly, it's a fresh breath of air and it's the biggest surprise for me, but I think the record is obviously one you could easily say, but on, if I had to bring it down to a player, I'd probably say Mikey Sammers still, if you would have told me, in the preseason that we'd have to move Mikey outside. I would think that he was going to be dropping down a little bit in production, but that kid is humming, man. And he's coming through he's and making growing. Some, dude, he's he, growing and learning. Yeah. Making some freaking plays out I'm there. Fly. Absolutely. Um, to your point, I would say, uh, cause you know, what would make you surprised is it, it goes back to what Dan Quinn said in the beginning. And a lot of times that could just be, you know, I'm here, I'm going to say what I have to say in front of, you know, these cameras and microphones, but he said it wasn't a rebuild. You know, he said it's a recalibration and uh, he liked the pieces that were here and there were some things that they had to do. And he seemed like um, it was just like a, a cliche saying. But in reality, if you look at the results and how quickly this has come together and and we're thriving and, and still not even all the way there. And I don't even want to be there yet. You know, I still want to continue to grow and gel and stuff like that. But it really goes back to say, like what he saw in his vision uh, with, you know, with Josh Harris, to you know, Adam Peters building that that unity um it's a recalibration it wasn't a rebuild and you see how quickly that this team has you know really put their foot on you know made a stamp and said hey you know don't don't overlook washington you know yeah and you know everyone's giving us our flowers because of Jaden daniels and saying the washington it could be a playoff team they're one of the best in the nfl rising in the power uh rankings and to your point with them losing Jaden and keeping their foot on the gas and being able just to beat Carolina in the face until like literally that they were into the ground. I think it really speaks to what we're both talking about here, what Dan Quinn has built in the sense that it's not just Jaden Daniels at this point, they're able to continue going down the field. And yes, the opponent was not the best in the league, but just the fact of the matter is these are NFL caliber players that they are going against and they were able to, go at will on them. I think it says a lot to what we're speaking to and that it's not just Jaden. And so uh, you have to give Washington some respect because they're, they're absolutely demanding it with their play at this point. Goody, I can't thank you enough for joining me, man. I'm glad that we can make this happen. Obviously my two co-hosts are not here, so I appreciate you coming on here. Be able to help me out a little bit, especially the listeners as well. Nobody wants to listen to me speak for 50 minutes straight. I mean, I really appreciate you doing that, man, but before we get out of here, I'd just like to plug your social media handle, just in case anybody watching hasn't followed you yet, brother, and would like to. Yeah, you could uh, you could follow me on uh, X, you know, Twitter at uh, GoManders. Uh, that's like Commanders with uh, just a G instead of a C. Uh, you know, you can find me on there, you know, talking about all, you know, Washington football stuff and, uh, you know, doing my stuff there. But uh, besides that, thank you for having me again. You know, it's always a pleasure to be on here. I love to talk ball, especially burgundy and gold ball. Um, I could do this all day, every day. So thank you for having me and I'll be back. So if the listeners are, you know, 
getting in familiar with me, I'll be back, you know, one day and uh, just keep keep it up with us. Yeah, and I, I love that necklace too, brother. You know, I'm, I got one myself. My one's black. Absolutely. I, I appreciate you, man, of course. And I know you will be back always. I, I, I told Hall when you were supposed to be on here last week, I was like, dude, I was like, man, he really impressed me last time he was on here. I'm really excited to have him on again. So I'm glad that we can make this happen and actually yeah. move to this one because I truly needed you, man. I, I really appreciate <laughs> it, dude. It was perfect. It just worked out. It just Absolutely. worked out. That's what the Lord does, man. But you yes, go sir. enjoy your victory Monday. Enjoy this week and prepping for the Chicago Bears. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a bar fight, and so we got to get ready. So enjoy the victory Monday, and then we move on to Chicago. All right, everybody. I'm Kyle. I'm Goody. And we'll see you guys again on Wednesday. Have a great, safe week. Enjoy it, and be happy. All right, everybody. Washington football. Adios. Woo! Adios. What's up, everyone? This is Kyle from the Burgundy Zone. We are releasing our own merch to support the show. If you want to rock the Burgundy Zone logo or you want to see Reed's face on your shirt, we got it. We're starting with t-shirts, hoodies, and zip up. So if you're a fan of the show, make sure you snag one before they are gone. Check out the link in our bio on Instagram, or you can find the link in the description of the video. Thanks again for all your support. Until next time.